Hi there, my name is Alan and welcome to Design Dummy. In this video, we will be exploring color wheels and how to design with intention. I'm sure you're a meticulous designer and you have a sense of orientation when it comes to designing or constructing, constructing something beautiful. But a lot of designers, they just go about and they pick a color here and there and they try and match it to their best ability. But little did you know, there is a software, a free software provided by Adobe themselves that is going to help you so much when it comes to colors, when it comes to arranging your assets in the most beautiful way. So let's get started and I'll show you exactly how it all works. So in front of me, I have this white canvas with some simple text and let's just create a hypothetical scenario where I want to stylize this and I want to stylize this with colors. So I'm going to keep this very brief and simple just to start with. So what we want to do is go on Google and search Adobe color. And once we find the appropriate link, so it should be under color.adobe.com, we'll get to this page. And this page is kind of like a glorified color wheel. Typically, you know, you're used to your traditional color wheel and it's going to show you a range of different um, hues inside of Photoshop, but not to an extent which this uh, software is going to do. Now, I'm not going to get into the technical uh, color theory, I guess, if you want to learn that. I'm sure there are plenty of videos explaining what each of them mean. You could probably just use chat GPT to find out the different terms that these, uh, you know, these different color harmonies mean, such as anogalous, monochromatic, triad, complementary. In this tutorial, we're just going to focus on com complementary because a lot of the times as designers, we just want to find that complementary color. If we start with black, then we know the most appro appropriate way to make a black text stand out is to just put it on a white canvas. But in our case, obviously we, we want to change that. So let's just click on complementary colors here. And as you can see on this color wheel, we can move and we can dynamically change the different colors that Adobe is going to display for us. In my case, I think I'm going to go for something which is in the deep kind of uh, blues here. So I can move these different tones just like so. And I can also see that the complementary color would be just right above on the color wheel itself. And it's showcasing at the moment that these yellow tones or these golden hues will work appropri appropriately with these blue tones that I'm searching for. So I can have a little of a tinker and see, you know, which colors I kind of want to establish here. I'm going to go for more of a faded look just because we're so used to these generic and super contrasty colors. So I'm going to kind of drag this like so. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see the actual color code here. So I really like this um, kind of blue color or tone, I guess. And I'm just going to copy and paste. So command uh, command A and command C or on Windows, control C and then control V. And I'm just going to select, uh, actually, let's start with the background here. So I'm going to select this empty layer and I'm just going to find my bucket tool. There we go. I'm going to change the foreground color and I can do that by simply highlighting the hex value like so pasting the color in, pressing OK, and now we can see the foreground color has indeed changed. So if I just press into the background like so, we now have that color. And if we go back and we look at what Adobe is displaying to us or the, you know, what it's proposing as a complementary color, we can go and pick and choose. We can mix and match. Um, in my case, I really like this color, which is right in the middle. So once again, I'm going to copy and paste that in. So I'm just going to copy this hex value as so. Go back into Photoshop, this time selecting my text layer 
and then pasting in the hex value. And as we can see, you know, this this is great. It's uh it's complementary. It works together really well, beautifully. And how many times as a designer have you seen a monstrous disaster where somebody's like putting red text on a black background or is putting white text on a uh, kind of a background which is busy you know we all as designers hate it when we see other designers make such simple mistakes and i truly believe now more than ever that the reason they do that is be because they don't have a simple grasp on color theory. And as I've said, you know, I'm not a color theory expert. Actually, I don't even have a degree in art or anything like that. But we can apply a little bit of common sense and we can use tools like Adobe Color to make our lives easier and to create complementary colors which are going to be displayed beautifully. And of, of course, we can mess around and we can we can really have a go here and we can see, you know, how this all kind of functions and um, just by moving it as so. So, for example, let's let's go for red and see if we can find something in the red here. So it's showing us red and green. Now, you might be thinking there's no way red and green are going to work, but sometimes you have to kind of flip the switch and think of it the other way around. It doesn't necessarily mean that green has to um, has to be the backdrop and red is going to go on top of it. It could be that red is the backdrop and green is the text. It could be the case that these colors complement each other in a different ecosystem, such as, for example, a website. Let's say you've built a green restaurant and you want to have a, a very... Um, easy to recognize call to action button and red even this kind of more toned down red could be the case i mean from even from my example you know from the websites that i've built and collaborated on we've built something which is like a teal website right it's kind of greenish and blue and we decided to put our call to action buttons as pink because pink screams it's it's so much different to what the user is typically used to when they're viewing that design that it draws way more attention. So, of course, there are other ways, you know, we can go about it and we can kind of browse around. Even if we go and look at what Adobe's proposing here, the great thing about this tool is that you can search a theme. So, for example, I'm creating a night-themed artwork for a client. So I search the word night, just like so. I press enter and there you go. It's pulling images and it's showing us what a typical night would look like in color. And we have this picture of a beautiful kind of um, moon and this kind of cloudy background. So now we can grab this color, for example, just like so. We can paste it onto our background like so already looking beautiful and you know we're, we're going for the for a very similar look here then we have this gold and we change our text just like so and we paste this hex value and that's very very beautiful that's very upper classy and this reminds me actually of a website i've built for a restaurant that was in very big trouble and by using these colors and adding a lot of contemporary values and upper classy values which these colors portray it completely reinvigorated how that re restaurant was perceived so we also have to think about colors like the perception about how consumers everyday people they're walking by by a, by a business and those colors are creating a perception. So your job as a designer is to create a perception of what that brand is going to be. I keep going back to my example, but 
in my case, I, I work a lot in dentistry and, you know, dentists, they always, they always use this light blue or this very aggressive blue tone, which is so typical of, you know, uh, dentists and just across the board healthcare, for example, the NHS here in the UK. And of course they do that because they have some smart people and they looked at the, the color of psychology. If also, if you don't know about that, you can type into Google color of psychology, just like so. You can go onto images and here you're going to get a, an emotional guide of what the portrayal of each color is. And in healthcare, blue is signaling trust and dependency and strength. You wouldn't want to put a, you know, a healthcare logo as red as red is fear and it's bold and it's bloody. Of course, you wouldn't want to do that. So you want to have something more toned down. So anytime you're also designing, you have to, you should consider these graphs because they are designed to help you again communicate in the most effective way and also integrate that emotional language and increase the level of perception when it comes to designing. So just by going back here, of course, we can browse around and see what else Adobe has here to offer. Uh, they also have a, a trending tab so you can see how the market is moving and how other people are adapting, uh, you know, different color schemes. And the other resource as well, you don't have to use Adobe. You can just use Google search. So for example, um, I'm going to just keep it very simple again. Let's say I want to find gold tones. All I have to do is literally search gold color tones on Google images and Google is going to display, you know, a range of very beautiful colors. So there are so many different ways to uncover, discover and find something which is most appropriate to your workflow. If you're on the go and you want a quick color palette and you don't want to customize and do all this tinkering, do a quick Google search and you'll get the same result. I can simply, you know, select this image and then paste it into my workspace like so, acting like a real artist now where I'm, where I'm creating my color palette. And the beauty of this is it's actually slightly even better now because let's say I, I want to apply these colors very quickly. What I can do is select my text just like so, move my color picker to the right and simply press my eyedropper tool just like so. And now I can quickly, quickly and quickly browse through the different tones without having to paste my hex values. Incredible tools incredible ways of working and uncovering how to do color properly. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you found this useful and I hope your designs are going to improve in the future as you integrate this into your workflow. Thank you so much for watching.